Welcome. Today we will review cervicitis. Our objective today is to define cervicitis. Cervicitis can be caused by certain sexually transmitted infections, which can have long-term sequelae such as infertility, increasing risk of ectopic pregnancy, and chronic pelvic pain. The diagnosis of cervicitis relies on clinical criteria and recognition of underlying etiology. We'll review these etiologies in the clinical presentation of cervicitis. Today we will also discuss treatment guidelines for the most common causes of acute cervicitis. Please refer to the voice annotated presentation on pelvic inflammatory disease for more information on the long-term sequelae that can be associated with cervicitis. Here is an overview and outline format for this lecture. Cervicitis is a general term describing inflammation of the uterine cervix, which is the gateway between the vagina and the uterus. Patients who have cervicitis may not have symptoms at all. However, those that do may complain of vaginal discharge, intermenstrual or postcoital bleeding, pain with urination, painful intercourse, and irritation of the vulva or vaginal introitus. Physical exam signs concerning for cervicitis include purulent or mucopurulent discharge from the ectocervix or endocervical canal, cervical friability, erythema, edema, or tendinous may also be present. Cervicitis can be caused by infection or other inflammatory processes, such as mechanical trauma or chemical exposure. Infections primarily affect the columnar epithelial cells of the endocervical glands. The most common clinically significant infectious causes are listed here. Gonorrhea and chlamydia in particular are important to identify as they can be associated with pelvic inflammatory disease and long-term irreversible adverse sequelae such as infertility, risk of ectopic pregnancy, and chronic pelvic pain. The clinical diagnosis of cervicitis requires one or both of these findings, purulent or mucopurulent vaginal discharge, and or sustained cervical bleeding induced by gentle touch of a cotton swab. The underlying cause of cervicitis, which is important to elucidate for each patient in order to guide treatment, can be found with specific testing for gonorrhea, chlamydia, bacterial vaginosis, or trichomoniasis. Testing for other organisms is not indicated unless a specific organism is suspected. For instance, if a lesion is concerning for the herpes virus, specific testing for HSV should be performed. If none of the above infectious etiologies are identified, consider whether mechanical or chemical trauma may be the culprit. For instance, patients who use latex condoms may have an underlying allergy, and this must be kept in mind. Consideration for empiric treatment should be initiated at the time of diagnosis for chlamydia if the patient is less than 25 years old. Current treatment recommendations consists of a single dose of azithromycin, 1 gram. Alternatively, doxycycline, 100 milligrams twice daily for 7 days can be used. However, this regimen may be associated with poor compliance. Empiric treatment for gonorrhea is only indicated if the patient is at high risk. For instance, this may be the case in the setting of known exposure, prior history of gonorrhea, or history of other sexually transmitted infections. The treatment of gonorrhea is ceftriaxone 250 mg intramuscularly. This is a one-time dose. Treatment for bacterial vaginosis, trichomonas, and herpes genitalis is reviewed here. It is important to ensure that any patient diagnosed with gonorrhea, chlamydia, herpes, or trichomonas be tested for HIV, syphilis, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C per CDC guidelines. In summary, Cervicitis is defined as inflammation of the uterine cervix. This can be caused by a number of different etiologies. The differential diagnosis includes infectious as well as mechanical and chemical causes. Infectious etiologies must be ruled out to prevent associated irreversible long-term sequelae, such as infertility, chronic pelvic pain, and risk of ectopic pregnancy. Treatment of sexually transmitted infections has implications for each patient's sexual partner as well as overall public health implications. Clinical symptoms may vary, and they can include pain, irritation, or discharge. Remember that some patients will be asymptomatic. The diagnosis is based on the physical exam. 
Treatment is aimed at the underlying etiology. Key references are listed here. Acknowledgements are listed here. Thank you.